When we think about connectivity, we think about the easy stuff, right? Phones, tablets, computers. Well, today, we're going to explore how these connections create a vast new world of previously unconnected experiences. After all, there are more people connected than ever before. Technology is powering more business processes than ever. Last year alone, we created more data than the past 5,000 years combined. Well, the number of connected devices is growing rapidly every year. And it's called the Internet of Everything. It's dramatically changing the way we live, work, play, and learn. Come on, let's go take a look. Welcome to the vineyard. We're going to use this winery to not just to illustrate the Internet of Everything, but to show how Cisco is changing the way data centers can enable any operation to rapidly change its supply chain. Now, this is possible because of the vast amounts of data created from things talking to things, machines talking to machines, machines talking to people, and people talking to people. So imagine a sun-drenched California vineyard stretching out to the horizon. Sensors have been deployed in the soil throughout so the grapes can call for water when they need to be irrigated. The soil sensor to irrigation system is a thing-to-machine application that can be invaluable in assisting smarter water conservation. Now we placed a Cisco 1240 connected grid router out in the vineyard so we can process data from the soil sensors. The vineyard runs off of cloud-based services from a Cisco-powered partner. The sensors also monitor environmental conditions such as relative humidity and soil temperature. Combined with sun and production data, this allows the vintner to grow grapes with the same flavor profile year after year. Here in the facility, we have pressing and filtering equipment, barrels, aging, the grape juice, and a bottling facility making the final product. Each of the barrels has a QR code attached to a sensor inside the barrel that informs the winemaker about the alcohol content produced in the fermentation and the aging process. This means that the winemaker can limit the number of times they open the barrels for sampling, preventing oxygen from being introduced into the process. Now, you may have heard about the drought recently affecting California. During the 2013-14 rainy season, the state received just 33% of its annual rainfall. So, our vintner here is doing a couple of things. First, the state has made live broadcasts of a university professor's research discussions available via Cisco WebEx-enabled telepresence. The result is that any vintner in California can get the latest information on water allocation levels. Second, using an application like this, our vintner can locate other growers selling their production to seek a match to his grape's flavor profile based on that sensor data from the field and from the barrels. Once they find a vintner, they need to onboard them to the supply chain. So, Cisco application-centric infrastructure enables SP Data Center to rapidly provision and deploy applications. All the information comes together for the vintner on a dashboard like this. Data about irrigation, water, fermentation, pressing, racking, bottling, packaging, it all guides him to producing an excellent product by making informed adjustments to his value chain. Now, after the wine leaves the vineyard, there are even more benefits. In the trucks, we use a Wi-Fi tag on the cases to ensure temperature, vibration tolerance, and security, so our cases remain undisturbed. Then in the stores, we can monitor sales at the bottle level. We can receive daily updates, triangulating the wine with the location of the store and the price. And the final result is we can quickly adjust the pricing and the distribution mix based on data coming back from the store shelves. Welcome to State University and to the classroom of our professor and her doctoral candidates. We're going to use this classroom to show how the Internet of Everything touches so much. Everything from the lights in the room to the intricacies of the professor's research findings on the California drought. All of these are creating new experiences by the data inherent in the data connections. Now, when our professor arrives for class in the morning, the first thing she does is she swipes her badge to set the room to her preferences. Her profile is accessed from the university server and the lighting, the registration of her telepresence endpoint, and the zero client on the desk all register our professor's preferences. In fact, 
every aspect of this room, lighting, HVAC, access, and desktop accessibility have all been placed on the network. A Cisco Catalyst 4506E switch can now run enough PoE that we can manage the systems in the room. Lighting can be controlled either on the 9971 phone or off an application on the iPhone. Notice that we're using the Cisco Telepresence SX10 Quick Set, an all-in-one unit that can quickly turn any monitor into a Telepresence video system. Notice also Project Workplace, a free online tool that makes setting up a video room very simple. This is the Internet of Everything, combining processes like room management with people, like Project Workplaces and how we work. A quick word about our professor. It turns out she is a senior researcher in California water policy, conducting research to inform the state about water allocations in the coming year. Let's take a look at how she manages her classroom. Before she starts the lecture, she can control Wi-Fi access within the classroom, determining who can see what, and accessing all the research that the team is working on. Now, stepping over to the Cisco Telepresence MX700, we see how it enables the professor to transform the discussion into an immersive experience. This dual camera system automatically tracks the speaker in the room using facial and audio recognition. So students can participate based upon who the camera is framing in the shot. Now, of course, these days universities face big cost challenges with limited seats and the expense of adding new buildings to their campuses. Well, for this reason, State University decided to offer the professor's lecture to everyone in California who could benefit from them. So, using WebEx-enabled telepresence, thousands of vintners and farmers can now learn the latest water allocation processes and easily change their supply chains by onboarding different suppliers exactly as needed. Welcome to Big Box. We're going to use a routine trip to this store to demonstrate how the Internet of Everything creates new experiences by the data inherent within connections. In fact, when we combine a social network and a Wi-Fi network with location-based services, the Internet of Everything can truly transform the shopping experience. So, let's see how we can reimagine a trip to the store, starting with locating a parking spot, navigating through the store, and finding an expert to help us when we need it. When we arrive at Big Box, we simply log on to their Wi-Fi network using our Facebook login combined with the store's Wi-Fi makes that easy. We can see the Big Box app, we select that, and then we view a shopping experience that's personalized to us. So, Big Box has assigned me a reserved parking space. You can also see that I set up an appointment in the store to help with some questions about light bulbs that I'd like to purchase. Plus, I have a shopping list of other items that I'm going to need as well. Using the Wi-Fi network, location-based services, and my phone, I can now map everything on my list. Can you see how it all comes together? Location-aware services, your social network, and your parking can all be connected and presented on any mobile device. A Cisco technology, CMX, triangulates three Internet of Everything elements, type of device, location, and access level. Now, given the limited space in stores, we can conveniently expand offerings to customers by adding additional digital features. In this case, it's a link that allows a customer to do her banking via a live expert who comes up on the screen. So we've followed the map to the first item on our shopping list, light bulbs. But these are not ordinary light bulbs. Each one is equipped with a sensor that informs us when it's nearing the end of its useful life and then places itself on our shopping list. A product like this could generate questions. How many times do you need to find out something in the store and you have to leave the aisle to find an employee? So, we've made product information available right here on this tablet. You can watch a movie for background information, but you can also talk directly to a live expert. We just select Expert, and that engages a Cisco Jabber video application client to make a browser-to-browser -browser video call. 
So far, we've been talking about the customer experience with the Internet of Everything. Now, we're here at the back of the store to take a look at how all of this data can be used to manage the store more efficiently. Our shopping carts have been equipped with Wi-Fi tags. The customer just presses a button if they need help. The Wi-Fi network locates the cart within the store so Big Box knows what kind of expert to send. More than that, we can see where the carts go in the store, the amount of time customers shop, and how long they wait in checkout. By combining these data with data from security cameras, we can heat map the entire store. And finally, we've got a great overview of all of these activities via a dashboard showing how the store is functioning. This compiled information allows our store to deploy staff to achieve maximum efficiency. For example, by opening more checkout lines when the carts are predicted to finish their shopping. So how will the internet of everything become real throughout the home? Well, welcome to the Cisco living room. Let's have a quick look. Aiden and his friend Foster are returning home from school. Both boys are wearing IP-enabled activity tracking monitors like a Fitbit. Using Cisco Solutions, a service provider can create a program that displays information about the boy's location to their school principal. Foster gets off the bus at Aiden's stop. Both head over to Aiden's house. The activity monitors worn by Aiden and Foster can capture profile information, such as what's shown here. Next, we note that Aiden has a soybean allergy. Well, the home monitoring application captures the motions of Aiden entering his home. Mom receives a notification that he's home, and he's brought a guest who's gluten-free. She can also view a list of the low-stocked items in the house neatly segmented by category. Seeing that she has no gluten-free options, and thinking that Foster will stay for dinner, she decides to order gluten-free pizza and coordinates for the delivery to coincide with the time she'll arrive home. Aiden and Foster make their way into the living room. They decide to watch a little TV. But this isn't what they want to see. Aiden brings up his channel guide, as does Foster. They then combine them to get a selection of programming they'll both like. But then they have another idea. Aiden picks up a basketball that he's got in the house. It's got a smart sensor inside. That sensor is communicating with the IPTV screen. Exclusive NBA programming options appear, and the boys, now very happy, choose one of them to watch. The NBA and the basketball manufacturer have a deal with the service provider to offer exclusive content like this. Aiden sees something that he likes. He freezes the action on the TV to Jersey. Aiden can either make a purchase from here, or he can add the item to his family's wish list at a local retailer. The boys finish watching TV, and they wander into the kitchen. A few minutes later, Aiden's mom receives an alert. The in-home energy management system has noticed that the lights and the TV in the living room have been left on. From here, she can dim them, and she can turn off the TV. She also receives notification that light bulbs have automatically been added to her shopping list, because a sensor inside one of them knew that it was going to burn out soon. Now, because he's wearing a Fitbit, Aiden's activity levels are continuously monitored. He hasn't been all that active today, so his mom, seeing this, suggests that the boys head outside to play basketball. But then, she receives a soybean allergy alert and decides it's better that they stay inside after all. Welcome to the doctor's office, where we've taken a routine visit and combined it with the internet of everything to see how our world is changing. We're going to use this visit to the doctor not just to illustrate the Internet of Everything, but also to showcase how Cisco is changing the way businesses manage security threats on the back end to make sure patient electronic medical records and the medical group's vast amounts of data remain secure. Now, our first stop is in the nurse's station. Now imagine that an ozone alert has just caused a respiratory issue with a boy. Let's call him Aiden. He's living here in the general area, and his parents immediately log into this connected health portal and communicate with the nurse to find out whether or not a visit is required to keep the boy healthy and out of trouble. The nurse is also logged into this DX650. 
using the Android-based platform of applications personalized to our nurse. The login on any of the phones will bring up her desktop profile. From that profile, she then has access to vital information regarding Aiden in the electronic medical record. Well, it turns out an office visit is going to be necessary. So, knowing Aiden is coming in, the staff decides to locate a heart monitor machine. The hospital has placed an RFID tag on this device so they can find it instantly. No small feat in a large facility. But that's really just the beginning. That RFID tag can also determine utilization and let the staff know when to schedule preventative maintenance prior to the heart monitor breaking. They could also determine when the monitor needs to be inspected for regulatory compliance or for required software upgrades. Now, this is actually machine-to-machine -machine communication created with applications and a Wi-Fi network that's location and contextually aware. Now we're at the doctor's desk, taking a look at the boy, Aiden, who's suffering from an asthma attack. Now we have Aiden's healthcare record on the doctor's laptop, shown here on the DX80, and we also have the same record on the iPad that the nurse can see. The patient can see this as well, and also the billing department. Now we use the Cisco Identity Services engine to reconcile the patient's qualifications and content requirements. Billing will see the list of procedures for insurance purposes. Aiden's parents will see symptoms and recommended treatments. Now, each of these encrypted requests travels back to the data center, accesses a portion of the record, and brings it back to the device. At last, the doctor is able to get to the root of the problem. It turns out that when ships come to port, and they unload their cargoes of soybeans, people downwind with soybean allergies can experience problems. Through the Internet of Everything, data was pooled, which included air quality sensors deployed by the city of San Francisco, the Port of San Francisco shipping manifests, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration data, and information from San Francisco-based allergists. Based on this realization, our doctor uses the DX80 telepresence for a desktop 1080p video to consult with the nurse regarding Aiden. The doctor could also consult with a colleague outside the practice about altering Aiden's treatment regimen. Now these are just a few of the many new capabilities made possible through the Internet of Everything. We thank you for watching and for more information on how the Internet of Everything is changing the way people processes, data, and things connect to make amazing things possible, please visit internetofeverything.com.